So, uh, hi everyone, uh, thank you for being here. So today we'd like to give you some insights uh, about the benefit of uh, mixing DeFi and DAOs uh, through a presentation of StayDAO. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, give you an overview of what is decentralized finance, because maybe some of you don't really know about it yet. Um, so uh, as you can see here, there's already a huge amount of money locked up uh, in a DeFi project, which is above uh, more than 680 million uh, US dollars. Um, and uh, this trend is moving upward and upward every month, uh, both in terms of uh, money locked up in DeFi project, but also in terms of uh, uh, user uh, adoptions. Um, but first, uh, what is decentralized finance uh, compared to the traditional, traditional uh, uh, finance system? Well, um, basically, uh, decentralized finance, it's about uh, taking uh, traditional uh, financial products and putting them uh, over blockchains. And that's things like loans, savings, borrowings. Um, and uh, the question is why we want to do that, right? Well, um, blockchains are really good uh, at representing a store value, uh, transferring assets and things like that. And so it's actually about uh, building um, more sophisticated financial systems that uh, profits from the already known inherent benefits uh, from cryptocurrencies and crypto assets. And but to build these uh, sophisticated programs and protocols uh, on top of blockchain, well, you don't only uh, need programmable money uh, like Bitcoin, but you also need uh, programmable contracts such as uh, smart contracts. And so uh, that's why today, like most of the uh, DeFi projects are built on the Ethereum blockchains because Ethereum is uh, uh, by far the leading uh, protocol, uh, um, I mean, the leading um, uh, smart contract platform, right? So, um, uh, smart contracts, for those who maybe don't really know about what it is, it's basically programs that are running on a blockchain and that can execute uh, automatically when certain con conditions are met. Uh, and that's and yeah, that's why uh, we, we see all the new uh, DeFi projects on Ethereum uh, for now. Um, so essentially, uh, smart contracts uh, in the uh, DeFi space uh, becomes the intermediary uh, where with uh, which you you're gonna interact when you're gonna um, uh, interact with a DeFi project and services uh, instead of um, humans and institution in the traditional system, where in traditional systems they will. Uh, uh, ask you for uh, who you are and what's your, your background and what is, is your financial background. But here you simply interact with uh, a protocol uh, and smart contracts. So here are the uh, most, uh, I mean, the, the, the best benefits of using such a, a system. So first, uh, we say that it's trustless. Uh, it means that uh, here the projects are managed so not but institution, but is uh, the rules of, uh, of the projects are uh, written in smart contracts. So uh, namely, you don't need to really trust uh, humans or centralized entity, but rather you need to, uh, to trust the mathematics uh, behind uh, the smart contracts. Uh, then it's transparent, which is uh, um, really different to the Financial, traditional financial system, which is not really transparent, uh, um, let's say, uh, because here uh, you, every code that is written uh, behind the smart contracts are open, and so uh, you can read it uh, anytime uh, uh, when you want. Uh, also, it's uh, accessible and borderless, so whether you're in France or Iran or uh, wherever you want, uh, as long as you have an access to internet, well, uh, you can ac actually access uh, DeFi services and networks. Um, and since you don't interact directly with the humans that uh, usually check so your background, financial background, and your paper and stuff, 
Well, here you can participate freely, but you can also build freely uh, uh, new uh, projects. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, one of the most interesting feature of uh, this industry, uh, in my opinion, is interoperability. So uh, it means that you can compose uh, your services with all the, all the uh, existing uh, projects. It means that uh, you can uh, plug every existing project into your project uh, really, really fast. And that's why like every single week, we, we see a really uh, new powerful uh, projects in the DeFi space. Um, so here, uh, as you can see, um, it's uh, decentralized finance is essentially a stack of protocol layers that uh, goes from the blockchain layer. Here is Ethereum, as, as I said, is the most uh, used blockchain for uh, DeFi. So and it goes up to the user interface layer. Um, and so this stack of protocol seems like this really complicated, uh, but actually it's not that hard in terms of usage as today. Uh, which was not the case one year ago, but because it's uh, going really fast, uh, this project have, have, uh, did a really good job on uh, UX and UI uh, uh, um, um, innovation. And so uh, a really interesting uh, project that did uh, Camila Russo, which she's a, a journalist uh, in the DeFi space. Last week, she uh, wanted to um, to invest uh, s a small amount of uh, uh, money in uh, ten different DeFi projects, so to uh, record the process and to uh, trace uh, the investment. And um, what she said is that the process was crazy fast, cheap, and easy. Well, actually, it took her one hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, to uh, to uh, spend uh, and to invest uh, our money in these uh, different projects, which is about 15 minutes per project, so it's pretty insane. And uh, actually, she she was already I mean she had uh, already some knowledge about DeFi and stuff, so so it was easier for her. But still, it's something that it's uh, uh, not possible uh, in the traditional uh, f uh, financial system. And moreover, uh, what she said, like, uh, which is pretty insane, is that she didn't have to give any um, personal info, like uh, ID card or anything like this. Uh, so uh, it's a really interesting space to, to follow for now. And um, so um, now we would like to uh, introduce uh, a project which is TakeDAO, uh, which basically try to take all the benefit from DeFi and from uh, DAO, and the the main goal here is to uh, align users and uh, service providers to uh, um, to embrace the core value of the ecosystem. And so now I will let uh, Julian uh, present uh, what is TakeDAO and where we want to go with that. So yeah, if you, if you guys were uh, part of the panel before, um, my name is Julian Boutelieu. Um So you can either tweet or you can send me a message after the presentation if you got any uh, any questions. It's uh, it's my name reversed, so Julian Julian B. So if you wonder, or it's like it's a weird Twitter handle. Um, but I, I use this one for gaming as well, so you can find me online. Um, so I make a presentation of StackDAO. StackDAO, it's, um, it's, it's something that has been taking us for more than a year now of research, um, legal investment, uh, to define if tokenizing. So StackDAO is from the company called Stack Capital, which is a decentralized uh, investment uh, company in a staking space. So uh, basically the idea was to, we've been operating um, stake capital, so we've been providing staking as a service. I will explain what is staking as a service, but when you guys, how many people are staking in a space uh, here? So like mostly 
Life Peer, Loom, what kind of tokens on Ethereum or Tezos, Cosmos? Everything. Tezos. Um, so basically, when you guys are staking an asset, or when you want to participate in a staking, basically, it's you've got asset that you want to you want to stake to capture the inflation rate of the network. So, for example, if Ethereum 2.0 is moving to staking, then people with ownership of the tokens will be able to stake inside the chain, and you guys will be capturing the inflation rate. How many tokens the network is printing per block, and you guys will be capturing that. But in order to have that kind of infrastructure, you need people like Stake Capital to validate and to provide the service to provide the service for you guys to be able to stake. So the idea was to tokenize this fund instead of just us making the money as a limited company registered somewhere in Europe, then we want to send all the money we make inside the pool. The pool is like a bucket where you guys, if you have ownership of the SCT token, the stake capital token, it's like making your side, you guys as a stakeholder and you can capture the fees. So if you go to the website, stake.capital, it's, I need to talk about that in order to present the, the DAO, but what we do is like, we got like servers across the world where we provide validation. We provide validation to make sure the network is solid and is running. So for example, we provide validation on Cosmos, Tezos, Polkadot, Ethereum, LivePeer, Loom, for you guys to be able to stake. So if you go to the website, you can participate, you can just click and then send your asset. It's not actually send you the, the asset because it's a trust, trustless asset management system where you guys never actually leave control of your asset. You just take them. Um, this, is, this is kind of old, it's like it's a couple of months ago, but basically this is, we got like a few million US dollars that we are responsible for the, the people that delegate to us. Um, and we also participate in a few different other services, like lending, borrowing, exchange, market makers, arbitrage, basically across all the scope of decentralized finance. Staking is decentralized finance, is an aspect of, of DeFi, but we actually, as a company specialized in DeFi, in decentralized finance, we provide all the different products for you guys to participate easily. And most of the network that we participate, we don't actually charge a fee. We sometimes, for example, like Tezos, we charge zero fee. So it's like providing the service for you guys to capture the uh, revenue sharing for free. Um, yeah, all those different things. So for example, like building a DAO or like involving a DeFi is not only money. You can be like, for example, insurance, uh, Nexus Mutual, Etherisk, or you can be like uh, exchange of different assets. Uh, Chainlink is for securing oracles on physical world. Also, like uh, a digital world, and all those different staking services, they provide between five to sometime 120 percent yield a year. It's like putting money in a bank. Instead of the bank giving you one percent yield, the bank will say, "Oh, we give you 60 percent yield per year." So it's like putting a thousand US dollars, and at the end of the year, giving uh, getting 600. If the token asset, the underlying asset valuation is not actually changing in the network. On the, on the market. Um, so this is growing a, a growing market, like uh, Paul explained. Um, so what is StakeDAO? StakeDAO is basically tokenizing this entire company that we've been operating for more than a year and a half for, instead of just us, as or myself, as a stakeholder of the company that created the company, we want to give the opportunity to anyone in the space that provide value, contribute value, or help the company to grow, to get a, a fractional ownership of the fund, and then make decisions for the future of the company. So for example, like Paul recently joined Stake Capital, he's gonna get tokens, Stake Capital tokens, and every time we get people that stake inside the fund, is going to get a fractional ownership of wh whatever money we make. Um, so we got an SCT token, we got a cashback mechanism, and then we're also building derivatives. Derivatives are assets that for example, if you have uh, Cosmos, Atoms, or if you have Tezos, when you stake those assets, then you 
you don't have anything else. So you basically, you stake them, you get the rewards. You get, okay, I'm happy. I've got the, I've got, I'm making a, I'm capturing an inflation rate, I'm capturing a yield, but then I cannot use those tokens because they are at stake. So what we do, we build derivatives. We basically build uh, additional products, products on the top of your existing assets. Um, it's kind of very, uh, it can be, can be complicated, but we got a bunch of people, like delegators, investors, like people that have assets, they want to stake them. We stake those assets inside the pool, so the, the, the big uh, infrastructure that you saw on the picture before, and then we let people uh, capture the yield. Um, so I will show you, um, you guys can actually interact with the, with the DAO, the DAO is on the testnet. It's built on the top of Aragon, and we've, we've been building different components inside the DAO. Um, who's using MetaMask? Yeah. So MetaMask is a client to give you access to the Web 3.0, so you can actually participate in this bench of different blockchain products. Um, so this is like, um, I will explain how to interact with the, the DAO. This is like more like liquid tokens. This is the, the thing that I explain. By locking your assets, for example, like Loom. Loom is on, it's uh, for gaming industry, or you can have LifePeer, or you can have Tezos. You lock those assets inside the pool. So a pool is a smart contract. And then we issue, so for one Tezos that you put inside the pool, we give you one liquid Tezos that you can do whatever you want on the market. You can play with games or whatsoever or you can exchange them or you can sell them, but at the same time, you, get the, uh, you capture the, the yield on the network. Um, so this is the uh, stake capital DAO. Uh, I mean, the one that you can actually manage the DAO, and the DAO is responsible for managing all the different pools. So for example, if, for example, you go on Cosmos, and then you can see that our validator has got almost one million atoms. I think the price of an atom is like, I'm not sure actually, five, five US dollars, something. It's probably like five million US dollars inside this pool. So this is like all the different validators that we're running across this network for people that can, um, that can stake. And then the DAO, this one, which is, where is the DAO? Um, well, I can send you the link, but uh, it's actually on Vinkabai. But basically what happened is like, if you want to participate in DAO, you go to Vinkabai, you go to this link. I just wanted to, to send the link, but this is the link on Aragon. And it will open the DAO. And the DAO, we make like some few decisions. So for example, depending on how much token you have, you can participate in the decisions. You can also change the fee. For example, if you stake into a transcoder on LifeP or you stake into Tezos into a baker and the baker is charging 10%, you can decide, okay, we want the baker to charge 1%. And you can make all those different decisions. For example, like we received a new ambassador in, in Stuttgart and the community has to uh, vote if this ambassador for uh, representing uh, stake capital, stake DAO in Stuttgart, that was the best person, was person, best person ever or not. And there's those guys, they can actually vote, they can decide, and they can make new proposals. And then we have how much money per day. I mean, this is like on testnet, but for example, per day we can distribute 700 US dollars to people that have access to the stake capital tokens. And you'll be make, you'll be, for example, if you 10 people, every single day you can, you can get access to 70 US dollars each. Um, this is like explaining how the, the liquid asset works, but we can, we, can, uh, we can have a chat after that because I think it's not. This is like, yeah, the, the liquid token. So we build, we build basically liquid, we build pool, smart contract on the top of existing uh, networks. Uh, that's it. Uh, do you guys have any questions?